Live from KSAT 12, the news at 530 starts right now. First at 530, a driver is dead after hitting a curb and crashing into a pole. It happened on Redland and Gold Canyon roads this morning. Investigators say he was headed northbound when he hit a curb and crashed his car, wrapping it around a light pole. The man in his 20s was pronounced dead at the scene and has yet to be identified. Officers closed down that road from 1604 to Gold Canyon Road for about an hour as they investigated. That area, though, is back open. Another story we're following. Take a look at these photos that came into our newsroom from a fire where the roof collapsed at an apartment complex, leaving nine families without a place to stay tonight. That fire happening at the Anthony at Canyon Springs Apartments just before nine o'clock last night. The Red Cross telling KSAC crews the apartment complex able to help get those families set up for a hotel for the night. The Bolverde Fire Department says multiple agencies worked to put out that fire together. They also say firefighters did have some trouble pumping water from the fire hydrants because of low pressure in the area. Officials say fire hydrants around the county are inspected every year, but property owners are responsible for checking the hydrants on their property. The Bear County Fire Marshal now working to find out what caused that fire. Armed suspects lured a teen into a southwest side home and robbed him and then his girlfriend. That's according to SAPD. This happened on Surrey Avenue near Nogalitos around 7 last night. San Antonio police say the 19-year-old man and his girlfriend were robbed by two people who held them at gunpoint. They managed to run away and call police who soon detained five people and took them in for questioning. Police also say one person was arrested for a felony warrant. A 33-year-old man facing charges tonight after his dog allegedly attacked a 68-year-old man yesterday. Kelly O'Shaughnessy seen here arrested by Bear County deputies who were called out to investigate on Blossom Canyon near, West, near Highway 90 West. Uh, deputies talked to the victim's daughter who said her dad was attacked by a neighbor's dog while he was out walking. The man apparently suffered several bite wounds. Deputies also talked to O'Shaughnessy, who's the dog's owner, and he reportedly admitted several people have complained about his dog. He's now charged with injury to the elderly, causing serious bodily injury. Well, tens of thousands of people are being told to shelter in place at the annual Burning Man Festival in Nevada following heavy rain. Thick ankle deep mud is making it hard for people to walk and drive, though some are managing to make it out. Jen Sullivan with CNN reports that officials are telling attendees to conserve food, water and fuel. The Labor Day holiday weekend off to a rough start for tens of thousands attending an event focused on self-expression. Thick mud caused by torrential rain in the Black Rock Desert has made walking difficult. The County Road 34 is approximately a mile, a little over a mile. Um, so people are walking out. There are people again stuck. But one attendee who was stranded says the harsh weather has taken the meaning of the event back to its roots. When it was really wet, you couldn't do anything. You just lived here. There's really no way to walk miles, you know, to get out of it. It's a survival event. Like you come out here to be in a harsh climate and you prepare for that. We don't know what's going to happen tonight, though. The remote event site was hit with two to three months worth of rain in just 24 hours from Friday to Saturday morning. The National Weather Service says more is anticipated Sunday afternoon. I'm looking at the forecast for today. It's pushed out a little bit, so hopefully that'll give these people uh, an opportunity to get off the playa. It doesn't look like it is going to rain as hard as initially uh, forecasted. Authorities say resources have been brought in from around northern Nevada to help with medical needs on the grounds, while working to deploy buses to get people out, which festival organizers say will likely not be a 24-hour operation. I'm Jen Sullivan reporting. Law enforcement, they're also investigating a death that happened during the rainstorm, though it's unclear if it is related to the storms. Meanwhile, crews in Florida now working to clean up a big oil spill. Workers removed about 3,000 gallons of an oil water mixture from the spill at Port Manatee. Teams are now using uh, about 1,400 feet of boom, which are floating barriers to try to contain the spill and the spread of the oil. It's unclear right now what caused that spill this weekend, but Coast Guard officials are investigating.
To politics now, lawmakers are now in a race against time to avoid a government shutdown by the end of the month. The Senate returns this week after its August recess and the House reconvenes next week. The two chambers have just a few weeks to resolve major differences over funding the government. GOP hardliners in the House could end up forcing the White House and Senate to make a choice to accept a slew of conservative priorities or risk a debilitating government shutdown. Now to the war in Ukraine. A U.S. official says the next aid package for Ukraine expected to include depleted uranium rounds. ABC's Britt Klenet has the details on how those rounds can be helpful in the fight against Russian tanks. According to U.S. officials, armor-piercing ammunition containing depleted uranium for Abrams tanks and other fighting vehicles will be sent to Ukraine for the first time by the U.S. The Abrams tanks are expected to be used on the Ukrainian battlefield soon. The munitions, which could help in the destruction of Russian tanks, are part of a new military aid package that's expected to be announced next week. It's very effective as an anti-tank munition. That's because it's very dense. It's a very dense metal. And upon impact with an enemy tank, it has a self-igniting fire producing effect. So it's very useful to punch against enemy armor. President Zelensky is pushing back against those who say the counteroffensive is moving too slowly, saying Ukrainian troops are moving forward. According to White House spokesperson John Kirby, Ukrainian troops appear to be making notable progress against heavily fortified positions in the south in a push aimed at splitting Russia's land corridor to Crimea. And in the process of doing that, also isolate Crimea, the Crimea Peninsula, which is a Russian stronghold. And they do that isolation by way of cutting the supply lines that resupply Crimea. So this is a very important uh, initial step towards breaking the Russian defenses. Russia, meanwhile, has targeted the Odessa region with 25 drones. Ukraine says it downed 22 of those, but its Reni port bordering Moldova and Romania was damaged. At least two civilians were injured. Brit Klenet, ABC News, Kyiv. President Zelensky announced he will replace the current defense minister in a statement. Zelensky said he believes they need, quote, new approaches and other formats of interaction, both with the military and with society as a whole. Still coming up at the news on 530, the community came together to provide food to military families in need. How much was given out next? Talk entertainment news, SAG-AFTRA already on strike against major TV and film companies may authorize a second walkout, this one against major video game producing companies. Yeah, the union announced Friday it will seek authorization from its members to strike against several video game makers ahead of negotiations scheduled to resume later this month. The union says talks have reached a stalemate and the strike authorization vote is needed as the union tries to negotiate pay increases and protection from AI. They're also asking for an 11% pay increase for its video game performers. Back here at home this week, the Grunt Style Foundation held a food drive to help over 500 military families here in San Antonio. At the Grunt Style HQ on Broadway, they hosted a special food deployment for veterans and their families, handing out close to 42,000 pounds of food. They partnered with other nonprofits like Soldiers Angels and Irreverent Soldiers, all in an effort to combat food insecurity for our military families. Greater than one in three families in the United States military right now are food insecure. We believe at the Grunt Style Foundation that the war fighters should not be worried about putting food on the table. Now, in addition to all that food they handed out, they also gave out some household cleaning products and other essentials for those families who deserve so much. And braving the heat for them, that's for sure. I was going to say, you yeah. saw plenty of sunshine in that video. And as we look outside with live cam right now, that is exactly what we are finding. Temperatures very hot out there, upper 90s, low triple digits across south central Texas. And spoiler alert, as we get ready to head into the first full week of September, that is still going to be the trend. Hot and dry out there tomorrow for any Labor Day plans. Fire danger is also going to be elevated. And with high pressure taking back over, those triple digit highs not going anywhere. We'll get to all the details after the break. 
Courtney caught me. I was up I, to something. She was drawing <laughs> something. Protesting. I'm protesting the big blue H. That's as good as I can do. I said, you better not I stop. Said, just start say no to ripping the big blue up confetti H. again. No more confetti. Enough. We're against it. We Enough are. For the summer. We're just, yeah, we're tired of the triple digit heat. I will say yes today. I mean, we're pretty much there here in San yeah. Antonio, but so far, preliminary high temperature, 99 degrees here in San Antonio. I know, what's a degree? But still, double digits better than the triple digits. We'll at least take it. Take a look at the highs so far for today. Of course, we did have several spots climbing into the low triple digits. 101 in Gonzales. Same stretching over to New Braunfels. 102 out west in Del Rio. 98 though in Uvalde. 99 so far the high today over in Hondo. Now, as we look ahead to your Labor Day plans tomorrow, it's going to be pretty similar to what we've seen out there this Sunday. We're going to start off muggy in the mid to upper 70s here in San Antonio with partly cloudy skies and we'll see plenty of sunshine take back over by lunchtime. Temperatures already climbing to about the 90 degree mark and then into the later portions of the afternoon. There's that forecast high once again topping off very similar to right now in the upper 90s and low 100s in and around the San Antonio area. 100 in Seguin, 99 in Canyon Lake, 100 in Divine. Forecast high of 101 off to our west in Bandera. Now something to think about if you're planning on stepping out to any pools, area lakes, reservoirs, of course, we know that those levels are down. Also, the UV index is going to be very high because of all of the sunshine we are expecting. Only takes about 15 minutes to start developing a sunburn, so make sure that you are taking the sunscreen out there with you. And something else that we need to monitor for, elevated fire danger. We know that we have the dry grasses and vegetation in place. The humidity is going to drop off a little bit into the afternoon. We'll start to see those dew points come down as some drier air mixes in. When you combine those two things together with breezy south winds picking up by late afternoon and into the evening. Yes, we are expecting elevated fire danger concerns across a good portion of our area. This in from the Texas A&M Forest Service. So all of those fire safety tips, no campfires, burn piles, things like that. Very important to keep in mind for those Labor Day plans. And really the vast majority of us going to stay dry tomorrow and over the next seven days, unfortunately. But as we head into the later portions of the afternoon tomorrow by about four, five, six o'clock can't completely rule out a very stray shower across our far eastern counties. Again, most of us unfortunately going to miss out on the activity, but we'll monitor it for those farther east where there has been plenty of rain, at least today, closer to the Metroplex near DFW, even stretching over into the deep south. That's all thanks to this area of low pressure currently sitting farther up to our north. You can see we're just on the wrong side of this low pressure system to find some of that better Gulf moisture that's being pulled farther northward as that low pressure system continues to work northward as well. So for most of us, we just don't have any notable rain chances in the forecast for the foreseeable future. And then as Tim was talking about earlier, here's that there it is big blue age that comes working back into the state of Texas by Wednesday. So you know what that means. Temperatures will stay elevated as well. In fact, each and every afternoon we are expecting a daytime high right around the century mark. So speaking of which, that's pretty much where we are right now. 99 degrees over at SA International, 100 in Converse, 101 in New Braunfels. Current temperature 100 degrees off to our south in Pleasanton. Still going to be toasty for any of those evening plans. Again, plenty of sunshine expected over the next seven days. It will end eventually, but for right now, we're just still dealing with the heat for this first full week of September, guys. And you're dealing with Tim's heckling. That too. <laughs> Boo birds. We're used out. to it though. <laughs> Don't heckle Mia. She's trying the best she can. She's booing the big blue H, not, not Mia. Not Mia. Just for the record. Okay, good. All right, Mary is back from her trip to Houston where you saw quarterback Frank Harris for UTSA have some struggles. Some struggles is correct. Uh, the quarterback throw, threw three picks in UTSA's opener yesterday, but the Roadrunners are backing him with zero hesitation. And San Antonio native Harris Steele locks in a big deal with the Cowboys coming up. I told Frank he's great, you know, that, that's part of the game. 
I love him. The him throwing them picks doesn't make me love him any less. He's still a great quarterback. He, I think he's the best in the nation still. You know, and I'm going to ride with my guy because I know he would do the same for me if I were to have three fumbles. He's going to love up on me, and that's the same thing I'm going to do to him. Love him unconditionally. Barnes and the rest of the locker room expressing zero doubts and all love for quarterback Frank Harris despite a rocky performance in Saturday's season opener right now in Big Board Sports. There were some good things that came out of the Roadrunners season opening loss to Houston yesterday. The UTSA defense excelled, limiting the Cougars to just 101 yards on the ground. And wideout Joshua Cephas and running back Kavorian Barnes played well to account for over half of the team's total yards. Although on the flip side, UTSA struggled staying on the field, going four for 13 on third downs and committed eight penalties for 64 yards. Quarterback Harris was eight for 36 for 209 yards passing with a touchdown, but there was a detrimental five minute span in the third quarter that saw the QB throw three interceptions. Nonetheless, head coach Jeff Trailer expressing no concerns for his veteran star. There's no doubt. I told all the kids, he'll play his way back in. He'll play his way back in. He's, he's, a, way, he's a ton of reps behind. He got in about 80 snaps tonight, uh, and he'll get better because of it. Uh, obviously, we got to limit his reps during the week uh, to get him back to the game, but he'll play his way back into shape. The Roadrunners will look to bounce back next Saturday when they make their season debut inside of the Alamo Dome. Speaking of teams that have a lot of faith in their leadership, the Texas State Bobcats and former Incarnate Word head coach G.J. Kinney shocked the college football universe yesterday with a huge upset win over Baylor. It's the program's first ever win over a Power 5 school. Coach Kinney shared his thoughts on what a win like this means for the Texas State program. I think it means a lot. Um, I'm just really appreciative of... Uh, you know, President Danfus and Don Coriel for giving me an opportunity. And uh, they believed in me, and I wanted to repay them back. And, and uh, we, we got to work the moment we got the job here. And, and uh, once again, credit to the staff and the administration and, and our players, man. Just we got a great group in there and, and uh, really special group. So I'm, I'm just really excited for them. Yes, it'll be Texas State who pays a visit to the Alamo Dome to square off against UTSA September 9th. We are in for a treat with that one. Over in Austin, the Texas Longhorns were hosting Rice, and UT got off to a slow start, getting stopped on two fourth downs. But the second half was another story. The Longhorns scored 21 points in the third quarter, and QB Quinn Ewers finished with 260 yards through the air. But head coach Steve Sarkeesian had his sights on the other side of the ball. The majority of the people that walked in the stadium thought that game was going to go a certain way, when in reality, our defense played a fantastic football game. We held them, I think, to 60 yards in the first half, created three turnovers, got a, got a really big fourth and one stop. So we won a way today that I don't think most people thought that's how we would win that game. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. It's the cherry on top for one of San Antonio's own Terrence Steele. After battling back from to full health from a torn ACL, Steele is secured with his future with the Dallas Cowboys for the next five years. Dallas and Steele agreeing today on terms of a five-year contract extension worth $86.8 million with $50 million of it guaranteed. The 26-year-old right tackle signed with the Cowboys as an undrafted free agent out of Texas Tech in 2020 and has started 40 games across his first three NFL seasons. Huge deal for the Steel alum, and it doesn't come as a surprise. He is beloved by the Dallas coaching staff. His um, you know, work ethic and, and just the way he goes about it. I mean, he's... He's always been no nonsense, um, extremely coachable, very bright, uh, and he's a glue guy. I mean, he's 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 really connected strongly, not only in the O line room but the locker room. So, you know, Terrence is a stud. The Texas Rangers avoid getting swept by the Minnesota Twins, winning winning a thriller today, six to five. We'll have more on that game. And the Astros matchup tonight on Instant Replay, the 30th anniversary edition of Instant Replay, might I mention. Oh, this is the big one tonight. Yes, very All special right. one. We'll have to go celebrate.
Yeah, we yes. will. Stick around. <laughs> Thanks, we'll, Mary. We'll be right back. Still hot if you're stepping out for any Sunday evening plans. 97 by 7 p.m. around 90 degrees at 9 under mostly clear skies. Looking ahead to your Labor Day, it's still going to be hot into the afternoon. A forecast high right around 100, and 100 degrees and we will see plenty of sunshine. And that is still going to be the trend almost each and every day throughout the upcoming work week, guys. All right, that's going to do it for us. We'll see you back here for the night beat after the game. There is a game. We'll see how much ABC owes us after this one. <laughs> Stick with us. We'll be there at 10 or after.